Alchemy Views with BJ. This is the first episode of my channel. I hope I can give you some good tricks and tips about cruising. Before I begin with this episode, I have a few people I need to thank. I need to thank Don from Don's Family Cruising and Tony from Lolita Loca, both for inspiring me to do this. As well, it's also Matt from Royal Caribbean Blog and Alania. Alana from Lifewell Cruise, thank you so much for your inspiration as well as some great information. Most important, my great cheerleader, Emma from Emma Cruises, thank you so much for your inspiration and your great tips and cheering me on to do this. So without further ado, let's begin. My idea is to bring you great balcony views on occasion and then my views on cruising. So, First, I'm here in beautiful Curacao. That's how you pronounce it. Just like healing a pig, Curacao. All right. And we're on Royal Caribbean's Odyssey of the Seas. Now, it is now the second newest ship. Wonder just came out a few weeks ago. It's a nice ship. It is a really beautiful, brand new, shiny ship. But she does have some flaws. So we're gonna talk about those first, and then I'm gonna tell you about all the cool things that I really do like about her. First things first, I'm not crazy about the overall line and setup, right? I am a Royal Caribbean cruiser. I enjoy Royal Caribbean. I've been on a few others, but Royal Caribbean is my passion. By the way, Matt, <laughs> that's an odd view. Uh, so I like the Royal uh, promenade that you find on the majority of Royal Caribbean ships. Odyssey doesn't have that. They have something called the Royal Esplanade. Now the Royal Esplanade is a little thinner uh, and honestly a hair confusing. A little bit harder to get around. Uh, I got a pretty good sense of direction so I don't have much of a problem but if you struggle with that it might be a little diff difficult for you. Plus it's, it's narrow. It's hard to get through. Uh, I know Royal Promenade can be really crowded when we're full, and this ship's not bad. We're about 80% uh, capacity, but it, it, it's tough to get around sometimes. So, you know, I, I, I see where they're going, uh, what they're trying to do with it. It's, it's very unique, uh, but it's just not for me. Not, not the type of design I, I prefer. I really do like the, the concept with the Royal promenade and it's really opened up and, and nice but everything here is beautiful and you know what I would take it for free so you know I'm not gonna say I would not be on her she's a great ship uh, another thing not really crazy about is the new concept with their elevators um, they don't have the push button okay they've got the little hover over it and it turns red only problem is it takes a little bit of time but that light to go on. And the elevators don't really come very quickly. Boy, those doors open and close really quick. So a little bit of a, a tweak in that system and I think they'll be doing good, but I, I do wish they'd go on and at least add the button to it. Cause you can push it, but they're not really pushing in on anything. So if they added the button behind the sensor, uh, so you can do either or, I think that would be a big improvement. Uh, elevators a little bit of a letdown for me the last thing is the show the book I wouldn't read it uh, not, not a great uh, show in my opinion uh, it seemed kind of overproduced now don't get me wrong the performers are spectacular it is a gorgeous phenomenon to, to watch but it's disjointed uh, I actually had to have the cruise director explain to me that at the beginning of the show, the like narrator is getting chapters out of different books and putting them together. If he hadn't explained to that, I never would have known. Uh, and I sat there and watched it from the beginning. Uh, just not the best concept to me. But now, let's go to the things I do like. The 270, which is where the book is done, is a great theater, a great environment. 
Uh, they've got the 2 to 70 cafe there, so you can eat. It's at the back of the boat. Gorgeous views. Beautiful place. Beautiful. And the technology involved there is just top notch. Uh, there's a great little uh, adventure AR uh, thing you can do on your phone. It's really enjoyable. Uh, kind of short, but enjoyable and fun. Uh, another thing I absolutely love about the Odyssey is their wind jammer setup. Now, if you know me, which you don't because this is my first episode, but there are those that do know me. I don't care for the wind jammer. It's not one of my uh, favorite places. I prefer to eat in the dining room. Uh, not that I'm eating snobby or anything, but I just think it has a little bit better food and uh, just a better environment, a little more chill. Uh, even those of you who love the, uh, the wind jammer, I've got to admit, it can be a bit, bit chaotic in there. Uh, but the setup here on Odyssey is a little different. Um, the food's a little further up front, and uh, there is a way to get past that to the back of the ship uh, after you've gotten your food, and it tends to be a little less chaotic back there. Um, and the food in itself in this wind jammer seems to be much, much better than in previous wind jammers that I've been in. Um, I'm still going to be uh, leaning toward the dining room. I like that environment uh, for lunch, dinner, and breakfast. But uh, if you like the wind jammer, hey, that's all you. What it boils down to is these are my opinions. Uh, these are my balcony views. And uh, you're definitely more than welcome to yours. Uh, you do what? makes you happy and makes you have fun on a cruise. That's what cruising is all about. So with that, we're going to end my first episode. If you liked it, click that like button, subscribe. Let's grow the cruising community. Uh, again, I want to thank all the people that inspired me, Don and Tony, Alana, Matt, and most especially gorgeous little Emma. Thank you so much for your support. If you are enjoying this video, thank you for your support. This is BJ, and those are my balcony views. I hope you have fun on your next cruise.